Coming up next uh, here on your election command center, we're monitoring the happenings ahead of election day 2024, December 7. Imagine reports of attempted smuggling of firearms through the Tamapot raises concerns about the security ahead of December, the December 7 polls. Stay with us here on your election command center. And this is a matter that has generated a lot of conversation, especially because we are very clear in our minds what has been happening in every election year. And I'm going to show it to you. So stay with me every step of the way here on Ghana tonight. This is your election command center. Well, tonight, some ammunition contained in a 40-foot container has been intercepted by the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority at the Tamahaba. Now, the content of the container seized by the authority includes 53 pistols, 65 pieces of live ammunition, 74 magazines, and a PC holster at the Golden Jubilee Terminal of the port or at the Tama port. Now, Brigadier General Zibrim Ayurogo is a commissioner of the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority. He addressed the media on this matter earlier today. Take a look. It is worthy of note that all importers requiring to import firearms and ammunition into the country must first obtain license and permit from the Ministry of Interior before the import. Any person who therefore import firearms and ammunition without the requisite license or permit commits an offense. The smuggling of weapons and ammunition poses a significant threat to national security and public safety. Such illicit activities fuel criminal enterprises, escalate violence and endanger innocent lives. Engaging in illegal importation of arms and ammunition is also a criminal offense punishable by the laws of Ghana. The Customs Division remains vigilant to counter all illegal activities and to ensure public safety. And, and look, we're going to show you that in almost every election year and immediately after a particular election year in this country, at least, uh, with precedents in mind, we've had these instances of uh, ammunition being impounded by the Ghana Radio Authority. Now, we're going to show you videos of what was impounded earlier today as we go on, on the screen right now. But this is it. Yes, what we monitored. In the year 2020, something of a sort happened. And before today, you already do know, the Ghana Police Service had been reporting of, and we saw the videos of some persons brandishing weapons um, during that uh, peace walk that led to a clash between MPP and NDC supporters in the Mamobi area, if you recall, just about, about a month ago. Now, in September 2021, GRA, same incident that was reported today, seized arms and ammunition at the Tamaport. September 2021, the Preventive and Counterterrorism Unit of the Kassam Division of GRA seized some arms and ammunition at the Golden Jubilee Terminal at the Tamaport. And it is the same Golden Jubilee Terminal that this, this uh, latest cache of the ammunition have also uh, been impounded as we speak. 40 footer, the same incident. The items contain. In 2021, what was impounded was in a 40-footer container, same as what we, we, we got reports of today, included nine size arms, pistols, eight assault rifles, 219 pieces of live ammunition. Look, the story doesn't change, okay? If, if, you, if you hear what happened today, what was reported today by the GRA, and you look at what happened in 2021, the script is almost the same. It's just that the content is probably very different. But it went through the same area, the same Golden Jubilee Terminal it was impounded and by the GRA in the same 40-footer container that was happening in 2021. Not just that. I want to look at what is happening today as well with this same report that the GRA has given us. The same Golden Jubilee Terminal, 74 magazines and a PC holster, 65 live ammunition and also 53 pistols. That's the side arms. In 2021, the pistols were not 53, they were nine. Now you think about it, what, what, what exactly would lead to a situation like this? 
and especially because we are concerned about the security going into this election. Dr. Victor Doke is a security consultant. He's a lecturer at the Kofiana International Peacekeeping Training Center. He's been watching this space quite closely. Dr. Doke, thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. I mean, with, with the heightened security situation ahead of the election, some 17 days away from today, and, and, and you hearing this and having precedence in mind, how does this strike you? Thank you very much, Alfred, and uh, good evening to all viewers. I think this is um, the height of it in terms of very worrying, and um, it's getting scarier with regards to the precedence in the context of illegal weapons. When you look at the Amor Riata um, Adabraka, the brandishing of weapons by political you know, party gangs and all of that, with this you know, kind of um, cachet that has been confiscated, or seized by the customs tells us that there are some people behind this, you know, a product event. And the quicker we put together intelligence, coordinate with regards to security services and get these perpetrators to book, the better it will be for us. Because this only heightens the tensions when you look at just some few days to the elections. The purpose for which these arms were brought in is actually mind boggling. What is it for? And how does one person or how does a group of people tend to like import, you know, illegal weapons without even notifying the appropriate quarters? Then this tells you that there is something in the offing. And let me just commend the customs division for doing a good job with the major general who has come out to, you know, clearly give indications about the do's and the don'ts with regards to you know important weapons in the country and then they should hold on to their guard and then do the appropriate thing and let no other persons whether high you know political figures who are you know maybe be involved in this thing you know have their way and then we can trace it we can trace the arms we can trace the serial numbers and then get those who even bought the arms over there and then get the perpetrators to book but this is very worrying Alfred with regards to the proliferation of small arms and light weapons already in the system, which we haven't had any antidotes to. Now, when you look at every election, you know, cycle, this thing keeps on recurring, as you have rightly stated. So it brings to the question, what actually is the motive of, you know, people who intend to bring weapons in? Is it just to cause chaos? Is it just for the purposes of what, to satisfy the political masters or bidders, what is it actually going to do? And I think from now on, what can be done extensively with regards to customs especially is to, you know, tighten their checks, intelligence, you know, get more scanners, get more equipment to scan uh, containers that comes in, capacity building for these um, officials to, you know, get to know intel, whatever that is coming in before even it arrives in the country. And I think when we do that, we can we can be sure that we are heading somewhere and then we, we can rest assured there will be some well, level but, of peace with us too. Well, but, but there's been instances where these ammunitions, albeit uh, we have to commend the custom division, at least with, with the previous instances I made reference to, but there have been instances where these, these ammunitions find their way out of the ports. You remember the, the, the cachet that was impounded around the Achimota area um, just about some six, six, seven years ago. So mm -hmm. some of them will slip out. So beyond the, the measures that will be put in place at the entry point, what other measures, in your view, should be implemented or instituted to ensure that if they get into the system, they will be identified? Well, that's what we have you know, from the process of acquiring weapons, getting a permit from the Ministry of Interior, you import the weapons. Now, when the weapons get in, these weapons are checked by customs. The security agencies, NIV, and uh, the other intelligence bureaus, the national security, and the police all get involved in checking the weapons. Now, whoever is importing the weapons would have to be also, you know, taken through some process before the weapons are released to you. It is not just released at a go. They would take you through the processes to know the purposes for which you imported the vehicles for it to be released to you. And then after that, the serial numbers of these weapons will be put in the system. So if the weapons get into wrong hands, 
they will be traced and then you the importer will be arrested so we have to have a, a very comprehensive system of tracing the weapons that come into the system other than that then you are sure to have transfer of weapons when they sneak or you know are smuggled into the system so i think the measures at the port should be very stringent in that anybody who wants to import weapons especially at this time should go through a lot of checks before even the weapons are handed over other than that then we'll just have uh, problems on our hands but if the weapons already get in the system i am positive that with the checks at the ports the serial numbers of these weapons that have been taken and input into the system you will be sure to trace them but then we all need to be vigilant that is why we need to up our intelligence you know apparatus to detect those weapons that are already in the system and then come up with a comprehensive you know right. process to retrieve these illegal arms through the small arms commission that have you know a lot of work to do in this regard and in fact, uh, ahead of the 2020 elections, just around the same time, well, sometime in October 2020, and we're going to put that on the screen right now. If you recall, in October 2020, it was the same report of a container described on arrival at the Tema port as containing personal effects, household goods, and a cutting machine was flagged as red channel. After examination, 18 packages identified as restricted items were found in the container, and these 18 items included... 436 pistols, 26 packs of uh, that's the ammunition, and then also a pepper spray. The CID later said the pistols were, were gas guns, but from the security perspective, even if it was described as gas guns, it was certainly one for, for, for defensive purposes. Is it not? Dr. Doke? Yeah, so with that incident, now, with me not having much details with regards to the aftermath of that event, even if you have that quantity, it, it, it still calls for questioning with regards to the purpose of which it was brought into the country. But then, I go back to my earlier statement that we need to just have stringent measures that whoever wants to import weapons, no matter who it is, should go through the stringent processes of, you know, getting the weapons before it is released. But for whatever purpose, now let's say, for example, the military or the police wants to acquire the weapons, they get the clearance from the Ministry of Interior. So when the weapons arrive, it is taken straight to the armory. And trust me, so these two institutions have a system of what? Marking the weapons, okay? Marking the weapons. So any other weapon that comes into the system, if not for the purposes of national security, should go through that stringent process before okay. released to the importers or the owners. Dr. Doke. I think that's what I will have to say. This is one that we'll keep an eye on as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for your thoughts tonight. As always, Thank Dr. You. Victor Doke is a security consultant and also a lecturer at the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center here in Accra. Just live here on Ghana tonight. Also live on 3FM 92.7.